Good morning. I'm Reverend Stephanie Reed Meyer, pastor of Modern Worship here at Christ United Methodist Church. We are so glad to have you worshiping with us today. We would love to know you are here. You can let us know by checking in on the QR code or by filling out one of the registration pads in the seat in front of you. If you're with us online, you can check in by clicking that check in button there. Here at Christ United, we believe that children are an essential part of worship. So if your kids have the wiggles or yell out during service, that is totally okay. No one's judging you, I promise. And we do have some specific kids tables towards the front of our worship space that the kids can hang out at at any point during the service. And if your kid wants to grab a children's activities bag, those can be found in the back of the space. We believe community is essential to who we are here at Christ United. We would love to get you plugged in. If you want more information about events or studies or just general information about our church, you can get all of that information at cmc.com connect or by visiting our Get Connected table just outside in the atrium. We are so glad you are here in worship with us this morning. Good morning, everyone. I hope you had a fantastic week. I'd like to welcome everybody online as well, just to say hi. Um, we've got a lot of fun stuff going on this morning, um, but I don't need to tell you about because they have videos and all kinds of cool stuff. So um, if you guys would stand with us and sing, uh, let's see what it is the Lord has to do for us this morning. Over the water, Spirit, come move over us. Come rest on us. Yeah. Come rest on us. Spirit was moving over the water. Spirit, come move over us. Come rest on us. Yeah. Come rest on us. Come down. Spirit, when you move, you make my heart bound. When you fill the room, you're here and I know you are moving. I'm here and I know you fill me. Calm down. Spirit, when you move, you make my heart pound. When you fill the room, you're here. Well, I'm here and I know you fill me.
Amen. Amen. Good morning, everyone. My name is Haley Bryant. If I have not met you yet, I work in um, youth ministry. I'm an assistant youth director, and I'm so happy to be with you in worship this morning. So this is Memorial Day weekend, and so we have a prayer. Will you pray this with me this morning? Almighty God, before whom stand the living and the dead, we give thanks to you for all those who sacrifice themselves our brothers and sisters who have given their lives for the sake of others. We hold them all in continual remembrance and ever think of them as with you in that city whose gates are not shut by day and where there is no night. May we honor their memory by working for peace and justice and towards the goal of a world in which conflict is resolved without violence. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Prince of Peace, It's not hard to give glory to one who changed my life. It's like a river running and it won't run dry. Oh, it's simply overflowing from the joy deep down inside. It's not hard to give the glory to the one who changed my life. Hallelujah, my song for all my days hallelujah not to the god who saves jesus christ my savior i get lost without your grace we'll make it easy easy so easy to praise so i'll praise you in the morning yeah i'll praise you through the night all my life I'm praising till the day I die. And it's only just beginning. I'll join the mighty roll. Heaven singing, worthy, worthy is the Lord. Hallelujah. My song for all my days. Hallelujah. You make it easy, easy, so easy to pray. You make it easy, easy, so easy to pray. When I was in the grave, you called my name. My heart woke up and out I came. In new life with a fresh new faith. A whole new start, my past to race. You place my feet on solid rock. You push your that will never stop. You put a new song in my mouth. A hymn of praise, and now I'm gonna let it out. Hear my shout. I am free, free indeed. Oh, Christ the Lord. This is 
like the one Sunday a year that my red dress comes out for Pentecost Sunday, so you're all welcome for that. Uh, I have a few announcements that I'd love to highlight this morning, the first of which is every summer our youth choir goes on choir tour, and this year at the end of their choir tour, they will be giving a concert. Uh, so we are so excited to celebrate them. They're calling it a homecoming concert. So you are all invited to join us on June 14th. That's a Wednesday evening, and it will be at 6 30 in the sanctuary that is where we will welcome back the youth choir and really celebrate all the experiences they had on their tour so we hope you will join us for that and then this is awkward for me to announce but here I am doing it anyways so next Sunday uh, is my last Sunday so for those of you who don't know uh, in the United Methodist Church we practice what is called an itineracy uh, system which means that the bishop can move pastors from church to church so I have been called to my next appointment. I'm going to be the senior pastor of Faith United Methodist Church in Corinth, Te Corinth Texas. I gotta get that pronunciation right. Uh, just south of Denton. So next Sunday is my last sermon here. I will be preaching here in Modern Worship. We hope you will join us. There will be a reception afterwards that I would love to tell you all just how much you mean to me. So I hope to see you all as we celebrate an exciting step uh, for my family next week. Uh, if you have not already, we encourage you to register your attendance with us and then uh, center our hearts as we continue together in worship this morning. Flowing 
in this place Fill our hearts with your love, your love Surround us, yeah You're the reason we came To encounter your love, your love stand so can I have yours thank you it feels so holy after that song will you all join me in prayer God may the words of my mouth and the meditations of each of our hearts gathered here be pleasing to you for you are our rock and you are our redeemer amen Matthew chapter 7 verses 1 through 5 Hear these words as Jesus continues the Sermon on the Mount. Don't judge so that you won't be judged. You'll receive the same judgment you give. 
Whatever you deal out will be dealt out to you. Why do you see the splinter that's in your brother's or sister's eye, but don't notice the log in your own eye? How can you say to your brother or sister, let me take that splinter out of your eye, when there's a log in your own eye? You deceive yourself. First, take the log out of your eye, and then you'll see clearly to take the splinter out of your brother's or sister's eyes. Amen. When was the last time you judged someone? What was the situation? What was it that tempted you to judge that person? Oh, you don't want to share it? <laughs> when was the last time you were judged? How did it make you feel inside? Judgment probably comes almost like a second nature to many of us. It's how we assess the people around us. We take in their physical appearance. We take in their mannerisms or maybe lack of manners. We pay attention to the way they speak and how they carry themselves. Simply put, we judge. We judge and it dictates how we interact with one another. Jesus is asking a really difficult thing here. And it feels even a little more frustrating, at least to me, when Jesus says that we'll receive whatever judgment we give. Because we know judgment is not always tit for tat. Just because we reserve or suspend judgment from someone else doesn't mean that that person will suspend judgment of us. That's the risk of following Jesus. When we are salty, when we are counterculture in the way we act, the world may not respond in fair, or at least what we consider to be fair. And yet, Jesus didn't just preach these words. He actually lived out this kind of life. The one person who could actually probably get away with judging because of the whole fully human, fully God thing. And yet, Jesus, we see time and time again, lean into relationships with the very people the rest of the world look down upon. Where other people saw corruption, promiscuity, blindness, and death, Jesus saw people. Jesus saw Zacchaeus, the woman at the well, Bartimaeus, and Lazarus. Jesus washed away the labels the world gave them and told them they were more than how the world judged them. What labels are we holding on to? that we need to wash away. I also always find myself interested in this passage, that part where Jesus talks about the speck and the log. It's all of this is part of Jesus' larger Sermon on the Mount. And as I look at that, as I think about a splinter in my neighbor's eye and a log in my own eye, I can't help but jump ahead in this scripture. So at the very, very end of the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus kind of encapsulates it all with this, with this passage. And it's a passage I'm super familiar with uh, because of the corresponding song I learned as a child at church. See if you know what I'm talking about. Let's jump ahead. Matthew 7, we're going to be at the very end of the Sermon on the Mount, verses 24 through 29. Jesus said, everybody who hears these words of mine, meaning the whole Sermon on the Mount, all of it together, and puts them into practice, is like a wise builder who built a house on bedrock. The rain fell, the floods came, the wind blew and beat against that house. It didn't fall because it was firmly set on bedrock. The wise man built his house upon a rock. Yeah, no, okay, some of us know that song. Okay, anyways. Um, Jesus continues, verse 26, but everybody who hears these words of mine and doesn't put them into practice will be like a fool who built a house on sand. The rain fell, the floods came, the wind blew and beat against the house, and the house fell and was completely destroyed. When Jesus finished these words, the crowds were amazed at his teachings because he was teaching them like someone with authority. 
and not like their legal experts. This is the word of God for the people of God. Let the church say thanks be to God. This command at the beginning, the no judging command, really all of the things we've talked about during this sermon series, the be salty, the turn the other cheek, the don't worship wealth, the don't judge today, all of these teachings are meaningless if we don't work to practically apply them in our lives. So not judging sounds straightforward. But how do we actually go about doing so, especially when judging is so second nature to many of us? Jesus gives us the answer. We begin by looking inward. Jesus tells the disciples, don't point out that splinter in your neighbor's eyes when there's a log in your own. In order to see others more clearly, we have to first do the hard work of taking a look at ourselves. We're not talking about judging ourselves harshly. I believe that Jesus wants us to show grace to ourselves just as much as we are to show grace to our neighbors. Instead of judging ourselves harshly, how do we each take a look at ourselves honestly? In what ways are we tending to the needs of our soul? How are we doing the work to be kind people? How are we serving others? How are we leading with love? And in what ways are we really failing? What ways can we do better? These are all questions that can help us take an honest look at ourselves. And if we are truly being the bright, salty people Christ calls each of us to be out in the world. Because when we have moments where we fail to be honest about our own frailties, we risk being critical and hurtful to other people. Hurt people hurt people. It's a very real concept. That quote has a lot of truth to it. Hurt people hurt people. We have to do work on ourselves before we can even begin to be good neighbors to others. And when we're honest, when we take note on what we can do to be better, then we end up empathizing and relating better with our neighbors. One of my favorite takes on this specific passage about not judging is from someone who argues that the word judge here may not be the best translation for what Jesus is actually saying. Instead, they argue the word condemn is better. And any time we do condemn someone else, when we condemn, we are making the decision to withhold mercy. And that, withholding mercy, is not what we are called to do. Jesus was all about mercy. Jesus was all about showing compassion and forgiveness to people over and over and over again. It's what he taught. It's how Jesus lived his life. And I am so thankful for Jesus' example. We do not have to be people who condemn It's simply not who we're called to be. We are not placed on this earth to decide who is in and who is out, who is deserving of God's grace and who is not. It's just not our place. Who are we to draw those kinds of lines in the sand? Who are we to assume we know the will of God? Jesus tells his disciples, his closest friends, that if they are to live in community together, if they are to follow him, then they are not to judge. They are not to condemn. It's true for us, too. If we are to follow Jesus, we cannot judge. We cannot condemn. We cannot decide who is in and who is out. And I don't know about all of you, But I thank God that those kind of decisions don't rest with me because I'm impatient, because I do make those gut reactions, because I have not heard everyone's story. I haven't sat at the table with someone 
and heard about their background and their pain. I don't know every single person in the world. I am so very comfortable allowing the Holy Spirit to work in ways that I may never see, ways that I may never understand. And y'all, that is the beauty of this command. When Jesus calls us to not judge, Jesus frees us of the responsibility of divvying out grace. Instead, we're invited, we're encouraged, we're commanded to give that grace, to give that love freely to all people time and time again. The weight of judgment is off of our shoulders. Condemnation is not ours to give. Mercy is what abounds. In the New Testament, in the book of Acts, not too long after Jesus' death and resurrection, we learn how the disciples went about creating a community centered around the teachings and power of Christ. And in one of their very early stories, these very first disciples, they are gathered together and the Holy Spirit shows up. The Holy Spirit is said to have descended upon them like a dove. And all of the people around, all these people of different nations, of different languages, of different cultures, they all understand what the disciples are sharing about Jesus. Even though they're all different, the Holy Spirit unites this group of unlikely people and gives them all an understanding of one another. Many of the people there find themselves in awe of the Holy Spirit. They find themselves speechless that this huge power has come and allowed everyone to understand one another. And then there's a group of people there who laugh, who make fun of the disciples, who say, yeah, right, they're all just drunk. They don't know what they're saying. They judge the story of the beginning of the Christian church, this story of the early disciples, a story we remember every Pentecost Sunday, this story of beginnings was met with judgment. Judgment from people who didn't understand what was happening, from people who didn't look inward, who didn't get to know people on the other side of the table, from people who didn't allow wiggle room for the Holy Spirit to blow away their expectations and show them something new. Which people are we? Where do we build our foundation? As we end today, I have shared with all of you before the works of Jan Richardson. She is a United Methodist pastor. She is an artist and a writer. She writes a beautiful poem about Pentecost that I'd like to share with you all. Um, and before I share this poem, she wrote this little blurb before it, and I want to share that with you all too. So uh, Jan writes this, a blessing for you for Pentecost Sunday. I am remembering a beloved seminary professor, Dr. Bill Mallard, and here's what I want you all to hear. This professor said that the miracle of Pentecost was not a miracle of speaking, it was a miracle of hearing and understanding. And Jan says, in these days, may we know such a miracle. When we suspend our judgment, when we listen and get to understand others, when we do the hard work on ourselves, that is when the kingdom of God appears on earth. Hear this poem. Jan titles it, Blessing That Undoes Us. On the day when you are wearing your certainty like a cloak and your sureness goes before you like a shield or like a sword, may the sound of God's name spill from your lips as you have never heard it before. May your knowing be undone. May mystery confound your understanding. May the divine rain down in strange syllables, yet with an ancient familiarity, a knowing born in the blood, the ear, the tongue, bringing the clarity that comes, not in stone or in still, but in fire, in flame, 
May there come one searing word, enough to bear you to the bone, enough to set your heart ablaze, enough to make you whole again. May we be whole people, loving Christ in all that we do. Amen. I'm Reverend Stephanie Reed Meyer, and in honor of our 50th year anniversary, we continue our video series focusing on our beautiful stained glass windows. Today, we'll highlight our Pentecost window. The Pentecost season begins today, about 50 days after Easter. On Pentecost, the Holy Spirit filled the disciples and united them with God, with one another, and with the world. The color red is commonly associated with Pentecost because of the imagery of flames that seemed to appear on the disciples as the Spirit entered them. In our window, you can't miss the bold reds throughout and the large flames at the bottom. The flame has seven tongues that represent the seven gifts of the Holy Spirit found in the book of Isaiah. We also notice the descending dove and the columbine plant, both traditional symbols of the Holy Spirit. As we celebrate our 50th anniversary, may this special window remind us of the power of the Holy Spirit, a power that continues to unite us today. Will you pray with me? Breath of life, on this Pentecost Sunday, we ask that you breathe on us once again. Make our consciousness tender to your touch. We hunger for your life-changing power that your Holy Spirit brings. May our lives exemplify the fruit of your spirit. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. May we use the gifts of the spirit that you have distributed to bless the church and to build your kingdom on earth. Let us pray together the prayer Jesus taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. This church here, Christ United Methodist Church, we are a group of imperfect people that strive to show God's love and mercy and acceptance in the world. So um, we create spaces where every person can belong. We have groups and studies and mission programs and all sorts of wonderful things. And those are all made possible by your generous gifts. So at this time, let us give together. Christ is my firm foundation, the rock on which I stand, and everything around me shaken. I've never felt more glad that I put my faith in Jesus. He's never let me down. Faithful through generations, so why would he fail? He won't. He won't. I've still got joy in chaos, got peace that makes no sense, I won't be going under, not up by my own strength, as I build my life on Jesus, He's never let me down, He's faithful So why would he fail now? 
he won't. Oh, no, he won't. Oh, he won't fail. He won't fail. He won't. No, 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 he won't. Oh, he won't fail. probably tired but if you're willing and able will you stand and sing this part with me love to plug you into a group. We have a serving team that's in the back and a Get Connected table at the atrium who can tell you more, especially if you're interested in becoming a member, getting baptized, all those fun things. Uh, I do have one additional celebration we are going to make uh, today. Uh, I want to invite Haley forward. Haley has been named the Youth Director and Young Adult Ministry Person at University United Methodist Church in Fort Worth, Texas. 
is, which is a very big deal. Uh, we are celebrating her, we are loving her, and wishing the best on this next journey. So this is her last Sunday with us in Modern Worship, and I do not have the words to express how much you mean to this community. Um, throughout my maternity leave, Haley was our go-to person. Uh, she has stepped up in ways in front of you all and behind the scenes, and we are so thankful for her. So if you will join me in a prayer for Haley this morning. God, we ask that you pour out your blessings upon Haley. We thank you for the friendship she has given us. We thank you for her leadership. We thank you for the gifts that you have blessed her with that she is no doubt using in her everyday life. God, comfort her on this next journey. Remind her that she has a squad cheering her on here in Plano, Texas, and that we wish her all the best. We thank you for the incredible gift of Haley, God, and thank you for the way she has blessed us. In Christ's name we pray, amen. Thanks, Haley. And she'll be in the back so you can all give her a little hug, too. As we leave this place and re-enter the world, we know we're not supposed to judge or condemn others. And luckily for us, we don't have to make that decision by ourselves. The Holy Spirit is with us, guiding us. We are just called to put our trust in something bigger than us, bigger than our understanding. May that be so. Go forward, strengthened, and renewed. Amen. Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face shine upon you. Be gracious to you. Lord turn his face toward you. Yeah. Have a great and blessed week. We'll see you next time.